I call to order the Adrian City Commission special meeting for July 25th, 2024. If everyone would please rise for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Roll call, please. Mayor Heap. Present. Commissioner Banky. Present. Commissioner Schwartz. Present. Commissioner Roberts. Not present. Commissioner Miller. Present. Commissioner Castleberry. Present. Commissioner Gauss. Present. All commission members present with the exception of Commissioner Roberts. May I get a motion to excuse Commissioner Roberts? So moved. Support. Who did the support? Sorry. Oh, thank you. I have a motion from Commissioner Castleberry with a second from Commissioner Miller. Roll call, please. Mayor Heap? Yes. Commissioner Banke? Yes. Commissioner Schwartz? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Castleberry? Yes. Commissioner Gauss? Yes. Motion carried. It is now time for public comment regarding items on the agenda. If there is any public comment, either come to the podium inside the chambers or you can participate on Zoom. Just to reiterate, there's a three minute time limit. And for the record, please state your name and place of residence. Hearing no public comment, may I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Gauss with a second from Commissioner Castleberry. Roll call, please. Commissioner Banky? Yes. Commissioner Schwartz? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Castleberry? Yes. Commissioner Gauss? Yes. Mayor Heath? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, moving on to the regular agenda. Before we read through the resolutions, um, City Administrator Greg Elliott is going to um, explain this and then we can have discussion on these resolutions. So um, you'll recall that we already passed a resolution regarding ballot language, which uh, the city attorney office then sent up to, well, the city clerk sent up to uh, the attorney general's office and they asked to engage with city attorneys about it. Uh, Scott, can you just talk a little bit about your interactions with the attorney general and then I'll explain what we have the, uh, on the agenda here. Sure. Uh, I've had multiple conversations with the, um uh, assistant attorney general that reviews the proposed charter amendments and ballot language uh, part of the process is we send it to the governor's office the governor's office kicks it over to the attorney general's office to review make a recommendation and then the governor reports back uh, the assistant attorney general and i worked throughout the weekend on this project um, he was uncomfortable with some of the language that was in the original resolution specifically the fact that uh this was in fact, if it was going to be a true renewal, it had to be renewed at the rate that was passed in 2014 and levied in 2016, which was the 0.9764 mills. Prior to that, beginning in 1996, you had levied one mill. The 0.976 had been rolled back as a result of Headley when it was considered by your predecessors uh, in 2014, they elected to pass uh, a charter amendment at that rolled back rate, the 0.9764. So essentially what you passed on July, I want to say the 15th, but in our last resolution was that you were going to renew it at one mil. That is technically not what occurred. What you were actually doing was trying to renew the 0.9764 with an increase to take it up to the one mil. And I think it's 0 0.23, 0 0.023 and some change to, to take it up to that one mil. So going back and forth, uh, essentially what we where we landed, uh, and, and I must say, 
the cooperation from the attorney general's office and the assistant attorney general I worked with was amazing. We had, I think, four conversations Sunday between eight and noon. He was always available for us and, he, and they're working hard to help us get, get this plan in place. Where we landed is this. <clears throat> if, if it's the intent to levy one mill, which was what was passed in 1996 and I believe in 2005, then we have to do a, or you would have to put it before the voters for a renewal of the point 09764 with an increase of the point zero two and whatever the change is to take it up to that one mil. A couple things to point out, this would become, this would be levied in 2026 because your current rate does not expire until 2025. Okay. So, and again, it, it is for a period of 10 years, but essentially that's kind of where we landed in, in discussing it with the assistant attorney general that reviews this. So given that, um, and, and not being certain how you wanted to proceed, because, you know, it was your view that you were, based on your discussion previously, that you were only renewing it, uh, not increasing it, because we did have some discussion to that effect as well. Uh, what I did is I put two al alternate resolutions um, on your agenda under this agenda item, uh, option A, uh, is what Scott just described. It's It brings it back to one mil, so it's technically will be called a renewal plus an increase uh, if it goes on the ballot that way. Option B is strictly a renewal like they did last time for the formerly Headley reduced rate of whatever it is, 0.9746 or whatever, or whatever that exact number is uh, that's in that resolution. So if you, whichever way, you know, and I'll open it up for your discussion at this point, but whichever way you choose to go, I, I would move one resolution or the other, and then the other one will just die because it hasn't been moved. And just to, to clarify, because on the cover sheet um, and on the headings here under B, it says millage renewal and increase. That should only say millage renewal. On B, it should only say that. That's just what it says on the agenda, though. The language in the resolution is correct, Beverly. And that's on me. I I, I missed that. So. Okay, so if, I have a question. If we did the, if we passed to put forth the ballot language that says the millage renewal and the increase, and the voters do not vote for it, what happens? You got nothing. Yeah, we have nothing. Okay, that's exactly. And if we pass and the voters vote for it in 2035, then we can do a renewal of the one mill. Correct. And right now with Headley rollbacks, we're already at a decrease of about seven and a half percent of taxable value because of those rollbacks, that 30,000 from the 1990s, uh, 2014. Yeah, I mean, that's right. So that was the sort of the flaw in the reasoning previously, perhaps, because it just got rolled back some more then, right? I move to uh, vote on R24-034A. I'll second that. Is there any more discussion amongst the commission on that? So that's the renewal and the, the increase. increase. Yes. And if that passes, we're good. If it right. doesn't pass, we've got to go back to the drawing board. You do. I mean, the beauty of doing this now is that it doesn't expire till the end of 2025. And so you could put it back on in 2025. Uh, you know, in some yeah, other fashion. Another bite of the apple Correct. next year. If it doesn't pass this year, we still got time to put it on the ballot again. Okay. When you break the cost down between the millage down, that I think those are very small amounts that we're talking between the two. Mm -hmm. I, I think it makes it a little bit easier for the general, like, I mean, for me to understand it at the one mill was easier to understand dollar and cents than breaking it up so much and regardless Headley's always can make changes, you know, so um, it made more sense. It makes more sense to me to levy it at that. And um, hopefully we can um, 
with the support of our constituents, it gives uh, our engineer the time to um, plan and I mean, fixing our roads and maintaining our roads is, is, is an constantly ongoing and the more time he has to plan, the better. So I, I um, am hopeful our constituents agree that A is the best option for us. I think too, if there's just a lot of exclamation, exclamation, sorry, you can't talk today, um, about that this is just literally putting it where it originally was and that I just think people see increase and they get a little bit of anxiety. So I think it's just going to be, you know, a lot of communication of that, you know, this is what this means. And you all say the streets are very, very important. And that is what you really want to see. Because I also think on the communication side of that is not, I don't want people thinking that, oh, well, well it's getting in increased. So we're going to see more work done on roads because they're expecting it to be increased exponentially. Do you know, you know, I just feel like it's going to really take a lot of also just a little finesse with that and really explaining that, <clears throat> excuse me, that it's just returning to what it should have been. Right. And I know that was the approach with the library because it was restoration of the original operating millage um, as a result of those uh, heavy rollbacks. I'm not sure if there's going to be a yes committee for uh, the roads, but uh, you know that was definitely the language that was used uh, quite a bit with the library. People like to hear that, but when there's something else added to it, being able to explain it, being able to clarify, I think is important. I think it's important right off the bat mm -hmm. that we are proactive with that communication. I think it'll help a lot. We have a motion from Commissioner Castleberry with a second from Commissioner Banky. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Commissioner Schwartz? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Uh, Mayor Heath? Yes. Commissioner Banky? Yes. Commissioner Gauss? Yes. Commissioner Castleberry? Yes. Motion carries with a unanimous vote. Moving on to public comment. If there is any public comment, it is now or never. Hearing no public comment, are there any commissioner comments? Hearing none, may I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.